So as you guys might have just seen, uh, <laughs> and you probably guess, again I'm running late, but this time because the dog decided to get into the neighbor's yard. So yeah, I'm trying to get to school, but this is going to be interesting. So I'm going to have to make up some time on the highway. But man, I tell you, it's one of those things, it's like uh, you, you plan everything, you get it all set up, and then, uh, you know, something always finds a way. So know what I got to do it's just like I need to, to get this going to where it, I can get into a normal routine because things keep coming up so wish me luck made up a lot of time on the highway so I got like a good 10 minutes left um, before we get in there though tomorrow I got to figure out exactly how I'm gonna get this done but uh what we need to do is we need to get the uh, truck measured and we need to get it ready to get that drive shaft in so I figure what we're gonna do is probably sometime today I'm gonna get a measuring tape or something and uh, go out there and just measure it and figure out what we need so we can get the one piece drive shaft put in. So I'd say probably within the next like week or so we should have that and then we can go put that in. So we'll see in a sec. Ah, all right guys, so I just got out of my last class. Well not my last class, I got one more. But the thing is, I've got exactly uh, like three hours of downtime, and I got a couple different things I need to get done. But my goal right now is I'm gonna go and try to find a tape measure at the store. So let's see if we can go get it. So the idea is this. What we need is we need a tape measure and uh, we're gonna measure the length of our drive shaft and a couple other little things like the, uh, the U-joints and we gotta measure something with the slip yoke and a couple of other things. We wanna make sure that we give them accurate information so that way when we get our drive shaft, it's not all screwed up, because that would really suck. What we're doing is we're converting the uh, drive shaft on these trucks, specifically at least on mine because it's a crew cab, it's got that stupid two-piece drive shaft and it is terrible I don't know why they came up with a two-piece drive shaft if any of you know please tell me because it is the dumbest thing I've ever seen um, and the worst part is because they have this carrier bearing and that carrier bearing is basically it runs in between on the second part of the drive shaft that holds its place and it's balanced to that drive shaft well those things go out all the time and to get them replaced, it's really expensive, unless if you do it yourself, but a lot of times people don't have the right tools to do that kind of stuff, so it's just, it's so aggravating. And these two-piece drive shafts are always shuddering, they're making all kinds of weird noises and stuff. So, the cure, you get a one-piece instead. It is a little bit more expensive, but it's completely worth it. Now, in my truck, I've got the, the old two-piece, my carrier bearing is shot. I'll show you that in a second. My U-joints are bad. Uh, basically, I would need to replace the carrier bearing, get the drive shaft rebalanced, replace the U-joints. So I'd have to do all this stuff and it gets very expensive to do. So instead, I'm just gonna swap in a new drive shaft that's a one piece with new U-joints and everything else. And it's gonna be maybe a few hundred dollars more, two hundred dollars more I think is what I got quoted. Um, but then I'm gonna have a one piece drive shaft. That's gonna be nice. So that's the plan for today. We're gonna try to get these measurements, get them out to the, the shop. They've got a really good reputation here. Um, they do ship. Uh, I'm not sponsored by these guys. I'll put a link in the description. Um, and I'll just give you an honest opinion of how they do and how it is. So let's go get that uh, tape measure and get started. So guys, I don't know what's up with this Texas weather, but good lord, it was like sweater weather earlier today and now I'm wearing shorts and a short sleeve shirt. I, I don't know what to do about that, but uh, I failed at finding a damn ruler, or not a ruler, I failed at finding a uh, tape measure, so I'm gonna do it when I get home, cause I got one at home. So we'll do that and then we'll get the drive shaft measured and uh, hopefully we'll get that set up. I still have to call them and they gotta make it. So it's gonna be a little bit, it shouldn't be that long for you guys, but uh, it's gonna be a few days for me. So 
So hopefully we can get that done, and then uh, we'll go and uh, we'll go from there. This is the thing about driving that sucks is that driving is like wasted time. Transportation time is just wasted. Like, uh, I drive about 45 minutes or so to school, there and back, like, and that's just like an hour and a half out of my day that I'm not gonna get back. So I try, I, I gotta figure out a way to do something with this time because it's like the most wasted time ever. And it's just, it's like something you have to have, but it's like, man, I wish I could get that hour and a half back. <laughs> You know, I'm sure some of you guys can relate to that. Okay guys, so if you want to see just how bad my drive shaft is, I don't think it's supposed to do this. <laughs> That's not good. This thing's coming off completely. This thing's just all screwed up. So if you look here, you can see it's completely it's completely blown out it's not even inside like this should be inside of it and it's not it's just totally not right this is coming off it's not even held on there so yeah this is what we're replacing all right guys welcome so i'm under my truck right now and uh i'm going to show you the steps you got to take if you want to change your two-piece drive shaft into a one piece um, there's a couple of different measurements that you're gonna need to know um, and we'll we'll go over those but we're gonna start with the first one which is the overall length it has to be on the ground uh, nice and level so it can't be like on a lift or anything and then we're measuring from where the differential the rear diff is up to the input shaft um, and we're gonna measure that so there's a couple things you gotta look for so let's go over those first all right, so when you're looking at your U-joints, there's a couple things you're looking for. Now, you can see on this, this is the back, the rear drive shaft, or the rear, uh, this is the rear differential. On your U-joint, there's a couple different models. Now, you can see here on mine, I have what's called a tab. That tab holds this U-joint in. They need to know that when they're ordering your drive shaft. Some have the tab, and some use what are called, uh, I believe they're called spider locks they might just be called a lock but these locks go inside of here and it holds the u-joint in place mine has a tab so that's something to note when you're doing these measurements now the next thing that you're going to want to note is the distance from the slip yoke so you see here mine has this little plastic uh, black thing they need to know the size of that as well so it's important, but when you're measuring, you're measuring to this flat surface of the tail housing on the transmission or transfer case, depending on your application. So, okay, here's a good example of those spider locks, or the C-clips, whatever you want to call them. These are holding these U-joints in. Okay, so that's important to note as well. Um, so this is the difference besides on the back one, which had the tab and looked like this these ones use these locks to retain the u-joints all right guys i know this is kind of awkward because i'm in a weird spot but that's okay so what we're going to do is when we measure this see this is the boot we don't want to measure the boot just yet right now we're going to measure all the way to that flat edge right there of the um of the transmission so this boot comes out to here this is part of the seal uh so we just need to know that flange surface and then we're going to measure down on the other end uh, so I'm going to take this and head on down that way. <laughs> okay, I'm coming, guys. I'm coming. Okay. Well, let's see. Okay, guys. So now that we're here on this end, what we're looking to measure is this flat portion of the pinion yoke. At least I think that's the right name. <laughs> so we're going to measure from here all the way down to the flat edge on the transmission. And then that should give us the length that we're gonna need. Um, so that's a pretty important measurement, but it, get it from the very flat surface of this. So I'll put a little marker all the way down to the transmission. So let's do that. Okay, so this is much easier if you have a friend help you. Okay, so I just measured mine. It's about 75 and a quarter. So, but make sure you check yours. Don't just go off of my measurements, okay? They may be different, you never know. So that's good. So now we'll move on to the next thing. 
Okay guys, so the next thing you gotta do is you gotta identify your U-joint. So you need to know what series U-joint it is. So on the website there's a few, uh, it has a list of specifications that you can use. For mine it's pretty straightforward, but you wanna measure the end cap size. So you're gonna measure this as well as the width. Um, and that's gonna tell you basically what series U-joint it is. Luckily on mine, it's a pretty significant difference between the smaller ones and the bigger ones. Um, the width is like four something, I think. It goes from like a three inch something to a four something. This is like four and a quarter. So it automatically tells me what it is just based off of the width. But I can also check the size of, I can also check the size of the, uh, the thing here, the, the, the cap. I can check the size of the cap. And that'll also tell me uh, what series it is. Mine, let me look it up so I can tell you the right number real quick. Mine is a 1410. Okay, so, uh, but again, make sure you measure to make sure it's the right one for you as well. The next thing we need to do is measure the size of this boot. So that boot seal for me is about three quarters of an inch. Okay, and then the, uh, one of the last measurements that they ask for is the, um, output shaft measurement and the spline count so that is going to be kind of hard to do with the drive shaft in so i may end up having to uh look up some numbers online and see basically what it is because these allison transmissions for these trucks are all basically the same so yeah, there's a good chance the numbers will be aligned but if i have to i'll pull the drive shaft and figure out what i gotta do really don't want to if I don't have to though so we'll go and we'll do that whenever I get a hold of them which will probably be tomorrow um, and then we'll see what they say so yeah okay so first I don't know why I kept calling this the transmission on mine is four-wheel drive and it's a transfer case so sorry about that if it bothered any of you but anyway um, so basically I also forgot I can measure the um, I can measure the uh, width of this output shaft and it should identify what transfer case it is but there's also there's also that sticker right there that should identify what uh model this transfer case is mine is a 263 hd so i don't know if that'll help you but it if you have like a i think it's 2001 to 04 duramax that's usually what's in there but you got to check anyway so i just want to show you guys he made it back uh thanks to my dad and my brother for fixing this when i was at school um so luckily the fence is repaired and now this little guy won't be getting out anymore so guys that was a crazy day it ended well we got all our measurements everything's taken care of so i hope that this helps you if you're trying to convert your truck to a one-piece drive shaft um, and if it does smash that like button if it doesn't help you dislike it and we'll see you in the next one now this little guy won't be getting out anymore thankfully now that we fixed that fence